Hey everybody, welcome back to my Subaru for another Miller Time devotion. Now, what I want to do over the next uh, probably several devotions is talk about emotions. Uh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Um, you know, especially those of you in Santa Cruz County and Boulder Creek area, San Lorenzo Valley, um, man, we have been hit hard. And it really struck me yesterday um, when a gal came to the church just to get her bearings, just to take a moment um, before she visited her home, which is gone. She's very emotional. And I've never met her. Uh, she's new to the area, had been there a couple of years with her husband, and I, I was waiting for some deliveries, and so I just kind of called out to her um, and asked her if I, she needed anything, and she told me why she was there, and I just asked her if I could pray with her, and we talked, um, shared a little bit, I encouraged her, and it just it just reminded me, not that I needed reminding, but this is not only a devastation for people who have lost so much in the material sense, and it has greatly affected uh, so many people's lives. Even if you did not lose your home, you have been going through an array of emotions. But here's my concern as we rebuild, as we provide water and clothing and uh, hotel vouchers and, and all the different essentials, here's my fear that so many people will ignore the more essential aspect of our lives. Yeah, we need food and water, we need shelter, but we cannot ignore the inner workings of our lives. We cannot ignore uh, what is going on inside us. God has given us emotions. We were designed to be emotional creatures. We experience all the emotions because we're made in the image of God. And if you study the scriptures well, if you look at God uh, and Jesus, especially in the New Testament, you will see that God experiences all the emotions that we do. Unfortunately, we live in a world where um, we have not handled emotions well. A lot of people, for different reasons, the way they were brought up, or maybe they're a guy and want to act tough, uh, so many people have learned to stuff or deny their emotions. But here's the reality. You can stuff those emotions, uh, but they don't go away. It's like putting all your junk in that junk drawer, or sweeping all the, the dirt under the carpet, or piling all the junk in your room when your mom says clean your room and you just stuff it into one closet and it's an absolute mess. Those emotions were given to us for a purpose. They're necessary. Emotions are what bring color to our lives. Without emotions, it would be robotic. Uh, it would be very gray. Uh, but emotions are what bring us color and add color to life. And so, uh, we're going to delve into understanding our emotions and what to do with our emotions. Because not only do some people stuff their emotions, the other thing, and culture is kind of pushing this narrative right now, and that is to bow to your emotions, to express your emotion, emotions, just, just uh, uh, be what you feel. And the truth is, neither of those are healthy. Scripture has a better way for us to deal with those emotions. Scripture invites us to walk along with God, in intimacy with God, in whatever emotion we are experiencing. It's important to understand, emotions are not right or wrong. They just are. And right now, some of you are feeling deep sorrow and sadness. Some of you, and you've already told me, you feel a sense of guilt. It's this survivor's guilt type of thing. Because you didn't lose your house and you have friends and loved ones who did lose everything. And so some of you are angry. Some of you feel regret. There were things that you wish you had grabbed from your house, but it's too late. You know, there's a movement right now, both in the church and 
uh, somewhat in the secular world, but it's being driven by Christians in the church, and it's all about emotional intelligence. It's about EQ, not IQ. Because the truth is, you can have incredible intelligence. You can have an incredibly high IQ, but emotionally be absolutely stunted in your growth and your capacity to deal with emotions, which, by the way, affects greatly your relationships, your marital relationship, your relationship with your kids, your relationship with coworkers, family, neighbors, even people you go to church with. God has given us emotions, and it is important that as we grow and mature in Christ, that we understand that God is growing and developing us in emotional in an emotional sense as well. Our emotions are part of that transformation that God is doing in our lives from the moment we, sur we surrender our lives to Christ. Let me share with you this concept of what it means to be emotionally intelligent. Here's the definition of it. It's the capacity to be aware of, control, in control, and express one's emotions and to handle the interpersonal relationship, ju uh, your relationships judiciously and empathetically. See, emotional intelligence is the key to both personal and professional success. And so today I want to just begin, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but I want to just begin to deal with the emotion of sadness the emotion of grief, which, which also includes depression. And depression, even before COVID-19, before the fires, was a pandemic in our country. The number of people that are being medicated in our country for depression and anxiety, they usually come as twins, is astounding. Let me read a couple of psalms to you, just parts of psalms. Psalms 6.6. 6. Listen to how the psalmist prays his emotions. I am worn out from my groaning all night long. I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. Maybe some of you can relate to that right now. Psalm 13, verse 1, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? Now notice, David, as he is praying this psalm, he's not angry at God. He just feels abandoned. And there are times in our lives where God is silent. But never mistake his silence for his absence. Psalm 42 verse 3 says, My tears have been my food night and day. All day long people say to me, Where is your God? Now you're well aware of what causes sadness in life. It can be a loss. As I shared with this gal yesterday and prayed with her, I reminded her that this is like a death. Losing your house is a significant loss, and it's like a death. But whether it's the loss of a house, of a loved one, of a dream, of a job, of a relationship, the loss of meaning, the loss of purpose, the loss of your health, all of those things can lead to grief. Unmet expectations, change, transitions in life can be very complicated and difficult. Maybe transitioning to the empty nest phase of your life or retirement or postpartum depression. And so, as we deal with our emotions, we cannot bow to them, succumb to them, let them control and dominate our life, but we also cannot stuff them and bury them and pretend that they aren't there. Just buck up and move on. That's not how we are wired to deal with life. And what the psalmist reminds us and encourages us to do is to pray our tears, to walk with God in intimacy and with others in all of our emotion and what we're feeling. Sometimes you need a moment 
either alone or with someone who's not going to lecture you or preach to you or, or give you advice, but someone just to sit with you and weep with you. There's incredible power and incredible healing in praying your tears. I'll be back with more about this next time. In the meantime, here's my prayer for you. May God's peace that passes all understanding, even in your grief, even in your sorrow, even in your loss, may His peace guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time.